Right, we are now 30 and a bit of change into the ride, 30 k's, and it's been quite interesting. Looking around at the riders, a couple of the guys are already starting to feel a little tired. There's obviously different levels of riders, as always. You're never going to come in with 12 or 8 or 10 evenly matched people. As I said earlier, when we were back on the showgrounds, you can't fake 200 k's. You need to be super conservative at how much you eat, drink, how much energy you put out on the bike, how efficiently you ride, and how cohesively you ride as a group. Presuming there was a light wind from the left-hand side, the headwind slight angle. Here what we've done is the road is straight, so we're not riding behind each other. We're riding at a slight angle like this. Helgo is sitting next to me. We are taking the brunt of it. I'm taking the most brunt of it because it's coming from the left. Then he's taking the second most. These four guys behind us are obviously in the wind shadow. So the reason why they're at an angle is because when the wind comes from this side, they need to stay out. They need to stay in that window, in that shadow of a wave oh, they recreate in the wind behind us. So they create, they're not pushing air. I don't want to get exhausted before I say come through. I want to naturally roll back. Then, then next to me, Helgo will naturally come forward slowly and he'll roll in front of me. And I'm not, he's not going to accelerate. I'm just going to stop pedaling hard. I'm going to drop back slightly. He's going to come across in front of me. I'm going to come here. The next rider is going to come forward. And this is all very gradual. He'll come forward into the, into the position. Now he comes through into the second roll, and this is all staying dynamically close to each other. As Helgo gets, he's done his minute or so in that prime position, he's dropping back, he then rolls to the front, and this is how the group rolls. The reality is, in this race, you're gonna be helping each other. There's no, there's no embarrassment in having a little push. There's, it's incredible how much it helps just to get a slight little nudge. Those 10 watts that pushes you forward gives you some momentum and keeps you in the game. You don't wanna waste a rider. The critical dynamic of team time trial riding is rolling. It's a rolling echelon. When the wind changes directions, you can decide to then roll the other way around. So you would normally roll anti-clockwise. However, when, you, when the wind's coming from the other side, you might want to then roll the other way. And again, the captain needs to communicate. Communication is key. We've now got to talk about seconds. Don't underestimate how long it feels to sit on the side of the road and wait for your cycling mates for eight to 10 hours in the heat and on the side of the road. It's not great. If you don't have your cooler box, your food, your drinks, someone to get sunscreen from, lube for your chain, a spare tire, tubes, whatever it is, you need your seconding team really bad. So here's an example where we've got the team together, we've pulled over for a determined stop. Okay, we are making sure that we've got electrolytes, we're just putting tablets into water here. Some people might prefer juice, some obviously got your own energy drinks, etc. but water on its own isn't great for hydration. You need your sodium, potassium, you need your minerals, because without electrolytes, you do get dehydrated. You've got two organized stops in the DC. You've got to stop just over 100 k's in, in Ashton. Then you've got to stop at 160 k's. We actually don't recommend the second stop. The second stop should be a refill and go. And then you're going to take on the three stooges to the finish, which are the three brutal climbs, which after 160 k's of riding are probably the toughest 40 k's in cycling.